He's a warrior. He's a warlord. At times, I would cross the line to win games. So we used to kick it and train, but Sui didn't care. I'm winning this. No, I didn't win what I'd won, similar because I was an aggressive player. Sand, this fellow's with you, Gray. The bloke slapped him because he was hard. In for Sunis. And a goal! The girls slapped him because he looked a million dollars. Sunis for Liverpool! This guy had charisma. One of the greatest Scottish football players ever. Sunis! Brilliant goal! He is the best player that I've ever played with, bar none. I've never seen Graham Sooners back down from anyone or anything in my life. When he barked, he moved. First and foremost, he loved the fight at the start. I'll win this fight, and then we can play football. Then. Tackles flying in everywhere. That was Sooness, and that's what he instilled upon us all. I have a young son, and he'll pull up something on YouTube, and it can be quite embarrassing at times, but I saw nothing wrong with it at the time. It wasn't so much tackles as assault. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. The association was appalled by one of the most serious incidents witnessed in Scottish football in recent years. I get it why I wasn't popular with opposition fans, because part of my job was to sort of be quite aggressive. Sumas loved it. The more they whistled, the better they become. He's absolutely superb. I got a buzz out of being booed away from home. What people thought or said about me never really affected me. No one likes us. We don't care. <laughs> people associate him with being a, a hard player. It was far more than that. He was a very, very good player. I grew up in Edinburgh in a prefab. And then after that, moved into a council flat. I had two older brothers. So I was always playing with people who were better than me and bigger than me. If you play with people who are better than you, it pulls you along quicker. So I think I was very lucky in that respect. As a 15-year-old, Graham Souness was enticed from his homeland to join Tottenham Hotspur and their manager, Bill Nicholson. I played for Scottish schoolboys and we played the English schoolboys at White Hart Lane. The great Dave Mackay was watching the game, he's got the programme, and he's seen as a kid who went to the same school as he did, and he recommended me to the manager there, Bill Nick. Going down to, to England at 15 was exciting, it wasn't too big a deal for me. I was always a confident boy. I rightly or wrongly, whatever group I've been in, I felt I was the best player. I've always felt that. The team should go up on a Friday and I'd knock on Bill next door and say, look, I should be playing in this team. You know, I'm, I'm better than Alan Muller, in and out England captain, Martin Peters, England regular, World Cup winner. And Steve Perriman, who was a couple of years ahead of me, I said, you know, I, I could do a better job than any of them. And eventually he got so cheesed off with me, he got me as far away from London as he possibly could. And that was Middlesbrough. I'd only ever played half an hour of first team football at Tottenham and Middlesbrough paid £30,000 for me. One of the game's more forthright characters was about to have a lasting impact on the impulsive 18-year-old. Jack Charlton, who was manager at the time, he sorted it out. Jack sorted everybody out. Jack Charlton came along and he was a big influence on my career. He sat me down and basically said, there's two doors for you. One door could lead to maybe a bit of a career. You might win something. The other one, you'll just drift off and be like, hundreds of other kids who had a bit of talent. So he was harsh on me, and I responded to his style of management. It was Jack's way, and Jack's way only. He was a bit of a jack of a lad, I must admit, when he came to the northeast. 
You can't go out drinking and eating and, you know, coming in at early hours of the morning and then expect to go out on a Saturday and, and do the business. He stamped that on Graham. Jack Charlton and the harsh realities of the second division soon brought out the best in Sooners at Middlesbrough. It was good for me because it was a real grounding in the northeast. Middlesbrough was not a town where you can walk around with a big head. We had a really good team. We won the old second division by a country mile, you know, about 16 points or something. Sooners, oh, beautiful shot! He had everything. If it was a tough game, he would be ready for that. If it was a, an open game, he's ready for that. He was a top-notch player. The young Scott spent six years on Teesside. His midfield bite and finesse won admirers and prompted a career-defining move. The um, chairman at Middlesbrough had said categorically he's not for sale at this time. I knew that Liverpool were in for me. Liverpool had just won the European Cup for the first time. I get the call that they eventually decided to sell me. They've agreed a fee with the team. They wouldn't tell me who it was. I'd made my mind up if it was Leeds or City or anybody else, I wasn't going to go. I was going to wait for Liverpool. I drove to the Queen's Hotel in Leeds to meet whoever it was, and I walked into a great big ballroom. <laughs> Six people sitting at a table, a great big ballroom. John Smith, the Liverpool chairman, was there, and Bob Paisley was there. And it was Liverpool. They'd made me the most expensive transfer between two English clubs. The first game was at West Brom. I'm in the dressing room, and at quarter to three, I've said to Joe Fagan, I said, Joe, I said, look, I've been here a week, and no one said to me anything. How's he want me to play? So it was and a big booming voice, and Joe was a gently spoken man. It was, F off. We've spent all this effing money on you, and you're asking me how to play football. And he turned and walked away. And I look at the dressing room, and all these lads are laughing at me. So I never, ever asked another question. And that was the Liverpool way then. What they were saying is, listen, we believe in you. Go out and just play as we know you can. Sudas! Brilliant goal! I was expected to be that buffer between our two centre-backs and anyone coming down the middle. And that's how I saw my job. I arrive in January 78. My recollection, I've got to go for this, but I might end up getting smashed here. I think I might have closed my eyes and the ball squirmed off my shin. Waited perfectly for Kenny to put it away. When I look at it now, I can't... Oh, that was a good pass. Get great credit for it. Shouldn't have done. I learned far more training every day with those players when I first went there than anything any manager said to me. I didn't need to be told if I played badly. As the 70s rolled into the 80s, Souness and Liverpool exerted a stranglehold over both the domestic and the European game under the heavy influence of the ruthless Anfield backroom staff. Ronnie Moran and Joe Fagan were probably the brains of the dressing room. Ronnie was the biggest single influence on my career as a footballer. You may be one of your biggest rivals at home, 4-0, 3-0, and you're tough for yourself. And Ronnie would shout across the dressing room to Joe Fagan, Joe, we weren't very good in the last 20 minutes today, were we? And you go away thinking, Monday morning, I better train properly. They didn't think we were very good today. If I had to say anything, I'd say that uh, Ronnie Moran and... Uh, Joe Fagg were actually frightened of Graham and did everything he said. League champions once more in 1980, Bob Paisley's side progressed to the 81 European Cup final to face Real Madrid in Paris. That was a real teethy game for Real Madrid. They, they didn't want to take us on the game of football. They thought they could be really aggressive to us. And they had a couple of people that were pretty good at that. Stelica, German player and their right-back and captain, Camacho. He was a tough cookie. And look at that. I mean, that has no place in football. I got caught after about 20 minutes. And I can remember with maybe 10 minutes to go, I'm thinking, I'm going to have to go off here. So I got caught just on the outside of my calf and I'd really stiffened up. And I've dug in, Alan Kinney's come through and got the goal. So you're not going off then. 
That was a great night. The team would see a change of leadership just months later. Phil Thompson was reluctantly relieved of the captaincy to leave an obvious successor. We won the European Cup in Paris. Tom had been captain, and then we have a miserable start to the season. And we play Man City at home on Boxing Day. We lose 3 1. I've made two howlers for three goals. Thompson gets it clear. Romola goes up and drops it again, and that's a penalty. Popezzi felt that Thompson had too much on his plates, but yet they kept faith in me after that game. And then Bob asked me if I wanted to be captain. My response was, well, there's a couple of players, you know, that maybe you should ask before me. And I was thinking Kenny and Phil Neal, who had been there longer, big players, senior players. He says, no, I want you to be the captain. So um, I said, yeah, love to. Suey took the captaincy, and now Suey was lord, and this is where he wants to be. We're 10th in the league, and then we went on the most ridiculous run and ended up winning the league. He was a great leader on the football pitch, but also a good leader off the pitch, and he, and he made sure you did things right, trained 100% every day. As a kid coming in, I just looked at it and thought, that's where you want to be, that's what you've got to do. An absolute born leader, Graham more than brought the best out of people. Five years on Merseyside had already brought three League Cups and four League titles for Sunes. But the 83-84 season was the pinnacle of his imperial reign at Anfield. We played against Everton at Main Road. It was the final of the League Cup. And it was typical of Graham Sunes. It was going to be his show. Come at the hour, come at the man. I put my back to the goal off spawn, and as the ball sat up, Got as much power as I could on, and the pace took it past. Probably the best goalkeeper around at the time, Neville Southall. And we won 1 0 and we held on. Just typical, typical Sunes, you know. In the European Cup semi final, just a fortnight later, Sunes once again displayed the ruthless streak that simmered never too far below the surface. We play at home um, against Dinamo Bucharest. And there's a guy who's man marking me, and we were one nil up, and he keeps pulling my shirt and blocking me, and, and I just got fed up. So he did something off the ball. I don't quite know what it was, but uh, there was a fella on the floor. He just chinned this fella, bang, broke his jaw, and he was laid out flat on the ground. I shouldn't have done it, but it was the way it was in those days. Those things happened. Then, of course, we have to go back out there. 100,000 people in the all sort of Eastern European Stadium banners being from my blood. Every time Sumas got the ball, they must be on 60, 70,000 whistles. But what they didn't realise, Sumas loved it. All very exciting. And that's what Sumas was about. Victory over Bucharest set up a final against AS Roma in Rome in a game widely regarded as unwinnable. If I could go and live one moment again, it would be sort of my last game for Liverpool in Rome, against Rome, where we're unfancied. We're not going to win that, are we? If any team can ever win against all the odds, then that team's Liverpool. I've gone to the Lions Den, it's their stadium, they've got a vast majority of supporters. People are saying this is a, is a write-off, but there was a swagger, you know, and it was coming from our captain. The influence that he had was one of subtlety, taking the mickey out of the uh, Italians. He stood in the tunnel for about a minute, and he was looking around, and he said, listen, hold on a minute. Why haven't they come out of their dressing room? Are they trying to take the, the, the mickey out of us? They kept us waiting in the tunnel a bit. Craig started singing it. Um, Chris, I don't know what it is. But I love it. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't know what it is, but I wanted to stay. So we were in the tunnel. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't know what it is, but I wanted to stay, and I love it. And we're warming up to it. I don't know what it is, but I love it. We started marching in time with our studs, making a hell of a racket. I don't know what it is, but I love it. 
Don't know what it is, but I want it to stay. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't know what it is, but I want it to stay. We're bang on the walls and Bruce is doing his antics. I banged on Roma's door. There, Captain opens the door and starts coming out. As soon as he says, carry on singing. And just pick one person, look in his face and carry on singing. You can see the Roma players looking at us saying, what's going on here? I don't know what it is, but I love it. I don't know what it is, but I want it to stay. They must have thought, yeah, he, the Eng Eng English, English bastardos. I can't even remember looking at the opposition and seeing what their reaction was. <laughs> We're going out there. Don't worry about it. We'll do the business. Not one of the players would have had any doubt whatsoever that we were going to win that game that night, albeit by penalties. We were such a solid unit. We had won the league, the League Cup that year. Last game of the season, we won't lose. Lifting the European Cup for a third time would be Souness's final act in the red of Liverpool. Now 31, an unexpected return to Italy was just around the corner. Roma themselves were supposedly interested, but Sandura were a provisional team, never won anything. They were spending big money. The president was a guy called Paolo Mantovani, and they got a good group of young players. Roberto Mancini, Gianluca Viali were there. And he wanted a player with experience. We all knew about Graham Souness being the captain of a very successful side. And we actually knew it would have been the right guy to help us to uh, make the transition to the next level. I'm captain of Scotland, captain of Liverpool. Did I want to go? Not really. It came about because I'm a first wife. She was about to inherit some money and she had to leave the country. I was excited by the challenge. All the so-called best players were in Italy. Never been scared to take a challenge on. It was an incredible leader. It would give you confidence, but also you knew you had to, you know, do the right things. Otherwise, it would get really annoyed. And believe me, you didn't want to annoy Graham so nice. In England, it was, you know, they close you down. It was very aggressive in your face for a midfield player. When I went there, they let you have the ball, let you turn with it. They would drop off and play deep. So it'd give you more room to play if you could pass. I found it easy. In two seasons in Genoa, Souness and fellow export Trevor Francis were instrumental in winning the Coppa Italia, Sampdoria's first ever silverware. We played Milan in the final. We won one nil up there in the San Siro, and I got the goal, and then we won at home to win the cup. A team winning a trophy for the first time was very special. Souness bade farewell to Italy in the summer of 86 to return home to Scotland, but not before travelling to the World Cup in Mexico for the last of his 54 international caps. Having also competed in 78 and 82, Souness failed to progress with Scotland from the group stage at all three tournaments. All players go to World Cups uh, and they want to play against the best. Scotland played against the best teams in the world and Graham proved that he was a match for the opposition players. I used to get criticised. They would see me making a clever pass on match the day on a Saturday night. They'd say, why is he not doing that every five minutes playing for Scotland? Kenny scoring all his goals, why is he not doing it for Scotland? It was a, a total misunderstanding and poor assessment of the players. For us, just qualifying for a, a World Cup should be treated as success. We're a small nation. Well, gentlemen, welcome our new player manager, Graham Sinner. Welcome I was 33. Welcome, yeah. I was completely fearless. I thought I'd drop into it because I've played at the highest level, I've won things, I played for my country, I played in World Cups. This will be easy. But it wasn't easy. I was lucky I had Walter Smith with me. Coming from another club, I didn't really know Graham that well. When he asked me if I would come to Rangers with him, I was delighted to do so. He was a calming influence on me. I still blame him for me getting sent off in the very first game. At Hibs, and you deny that, but it's bloody true. <laughs> oh, dear me, that was carnage. We were going to our first game at Easter Road, and he said to me, It's an empty, I need to watch out for. I said, A boy called Billy Kirkwood, Kirky will leave a foot in every now and again. But I was forgetting that Graham really didn't know any of the players in Scotland, so he really wouldn't know who that player was anyway. 
that says we're walking out the tunnel. Wrong time to tell me. Good play from Sinis. Immediately under pressure. They went into an early challenge. There was a, a bit of a melee and to get involved in that. As you would expect him to do. And was ordered off. Totally my fault, I get sent off foolishly. But I was on my toes because I'm thinking this other guy um, is going to have a dip at me. Just wrong, just something I wish hadn't happened. But can't change this. Rangers needed a revamp, they needed everyone to know that nobody was going to walk over us. And um, that first game made sure that everybody got that message. No matter where we went, the atmosphere was incredible. Because all of a sudden Graham had come, it was like an absolute tornado arrived on the scene. Rangers hadn't won the league for nine years. Our gates were down to sort of 17,000. So we sort of lit the fire. Rangers has a support. Just needed being excited again, the fire being lit again. I know what the supporters want. They don't want it as much as I want it. Scottish football was buzzing. McCoy's linking with Butcher. There's McCoy's going through. Great chance for Rangers. It would appear that for many, football has been rediscovered. Deflected. Two of his first three signings were England captain and England goalkeeper, Chris Woods and Big Terry. It certainly wasn't a place for the faint-hearted. Training was exciting at times. We used to play five a sides on a Friday, and we used to play Scotland versus England. And Graham used to play for England, which used to drive us mental. And I remember one Friday morning, we were giving England a bit of a going over, and Wee Durant put his foot in the ball, and Graham came in and smashed him. He said to Graham, is that your best? And Graham said, no, no, this is. Bang, <laughs> and smashed him. And we were all into it. We were all rolling about, and I remember Walter running about with a whistle. <laughs> it was magic. I always remember his first old film game. Everybody was going to say, so I have to be careful. It's going to be me. Um, but it was very cold and calculating in that game. Managed to win. Graham showed everyone the influence they could have in a, in a game. We won the league up at Aberdeen, I can still remember it. Graham gets set off, I can also remember that. But we won the league. And the scenes after the game on the park at Pataudry and all the way down from Aberdeen to Glasgow, it was just absolutely phenomenal, absolutely fantastic. He turned that team and that club back into winners. He took to management very well. Being a player manager is not easy. We didn't win a league the next year. Graham knew that it was a stage for him to move into management on a gradual basis and forget about the playing side. But after that, we went on to win nine in a row, and that foundation was firmly laid by Graham Swinnes. I take great pride in how the job worked out there. We got him back to being the, the top dogs, dominating Scottish football, the quarterfinals of the European Cup. We played in certainly one of the most successful Rangers teams in the club's history. And I could probably tell you more about the defeats than I could the great victories. And I think that would tell you more about the mentality that Graham and Walter installed in us as players. And then I decided to leave, which, looking back at that time, was a mistake, because going to Liverpool at that time was not the right time, for me anyway. An ill-fated return to manage his former club did yield the one trophy that had eluded Souness as a player, the FA Cup in 1992. As a manager, Souness continued to provoke controversy both at home and abroad. Yet his record in the game is without parallel. I think I've won 26, 27 major trophies as a manager and a player. There's been far better players than me that have won next to nothing. How do I want to be remembered? You have to ask other people. <laughs> You could play strike if you needed him. You could play left back if you needed him. It was absolutely unbelievable. One of the best midfielder I played with or against. 
midfield player that could boss the game, run the game, dictate the pace of the game, pass the ball, mix it up, be aggressive once or twice, possibly overly. Suey knew when to do it, when to put his foot in, when to play football. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant to play with. That's what's important for what my teammates thought. I mean, that's really all that matters to me. I've always loved football. But I've got absolutely no regrets. I look back now and wish I could do it all again tomorrow. I enjoyed it.